Hi, we're continuing on the uh, vegetable, herb, and fruit tree garden container growing project. Again, because I have the worst soil to start with. It's all newly compacted or recently compacted new development soil, depleted of all the good stuff. It will grow stuff, grow plants, but it's not going to grow my vegetables in a quick, safe, and effective way. Also, I don't have time to build a planting planter barrier because of the family dogs. And I also want to grow these olives for making cuttings or selling as large specimens. So I have a beautiful Mission olive tree here. Again, very overgrown. I can ship these plants to you. These are many years older than normal size that I would send out. They're heavy. They're grown in solid soil because they're grown by a grower. Just grows for olive tree growers as opposed to the garden industry. Plants very root bound. So we're going to get them in here with the shovel. And right away, we're finding out that either the ants in our home, or at our home, or some other ants have uh, made their way and are living in this nursery uh, container, with this, or living in the root ball of this plant. Uh, ants are a very destructive pest in the garden landscape because they farm aphids and other pests and eat their poop. And so one way we can combat these is by keeping the container nice and wet once we transplant it. You can continuously flood the ants, they'll die off. Pull our plant out of here. And yeah, still not willing to beat it like a bad neighbor. Leave my meal alone, neighbor. Turn down the music. There we go. So we have that huge root ball here. Want to get in here and rough it up. You can see some really large roots. You see the soil is really dry. That's why the ants have made a nice home in it. They won't make a home in a wet, wet soil. So we should be able to feed our ants just by putting this in our garden container and keeping that amply wet. Beautiful trunk. And get rid of some of these weeds. Again, we're working with a number five size low branching mission olive tree. Get it into our container. I've used coarse planting mix at the bottom. Can portion of the container as I go up. We're going to get over to the uh, smaller planting. Uh, material. Spread out in here. mix in another type of planting mix. This one's a peat with vermiculite. We're going to use many different mixes in this project so that we can all see how the plants grow and how it affects the uh, container levels in terms of decomposition. Many times, especially if you're making a container for a permanent ornamental planting, come back a year later and the soil lines down here. So we'll see how this layering and mixing affects that over the next 12 months. We're in August right now, mid 90s today. This olive tree doesn't have any unique characteristics down here at the trunk. We're just going to plant it at the soil line. If it had a nice gnarled trunk, we'd put it up high. This is going to be my small herb and maybe a chili or a, another couple chilies in this container. I put my large herbs in in a separate container on the other side. 
because I don't want them overrunning my basil and my thyme. And I'm going to sneak in my aloe plant right now because I continuously tear up my hands either with the trees or bug harvesting. First thing to go in here is my nice aloe. It's going to help get my wounds fixed up in a hurry. Then I've got some English thyme. Not a lot of white roots here. This is probably not the healthiest plant. Most of them have been uh, killed off because of the high heat this plant was at at the uh, lows of the Home Depot sitting in the full sun. We're going to pinch a lot of this off. We're going to watch it. It'll quickly regrow out new roots in this nice comfortable plant planting mix. Have some awesome basil. You need to keep the basil from flowering to keep it going. Ah, here we go. Beautiful white roots, healthy plant. Going to pinch off all this excess at the bottom. Strong growing plant. This basil, because it's so overgrown, may start flowering soon. Gonna, if that happens, going to get in there and pinch it back. Once the basil starts flowering, it's really just time to replace it. Because it's just going to stop leafing after a little bit. Rough it up. Now sink it down in there a little bit lower. Right here I have uh, some Greek oregano. Again, roots have been fried to crisp because of the way it was stored at the nursery. Not a healthy plant right now, but we will get it going again. Again, I'm keeping all my small herbs away from my big herbs like rosemary, sages. They just get out of control. Have some lemon thyme here. Get in the kitchen after a while with some olive oil. We're going to see how the lemon thyme can be used separately from regular thyme. I have no idea, frankly, but I love the smell. This pot can be planted straight into the container. I don't like pots like that. I think it's just appealing to people's laziness. I'm going to get that plant out of there. I also want to make sure that I pinch off the roots. Rough it up a lot. Not a lot of healthy white roots in here, just a few. And because I love overplanting, I'm going to grab a couple chilies or a big pepper and put it in here. Fittest of survival in my garden. I've got a uh, nice Anaheim pepper. Love these plants. Actually, I love the fruit. Oh, yeah. Beautiful white root structure, not overgrown. You know, when you pick these plants up at the nursery, pull the container off and look at it. You want some nasty uh, root structure, all brown. Maybe even pull the pot off and find a bunch of slugs in the bottom. Maybe even some baby snails. I'm going to rough this up. People often wonder where all the snails and slugs come from that are in their garden. They come from the grower. Just impossible for most growers to control the stuff. I think we got a little creature right here. Pop it. I love a competitive garden. Love everything growing in there. As long as you're not going to be growing into each other in, in the sense of having a big rosemary overtake this thyme. This pepper is not going to overtake the thyme or the basil. Might even wind up with some good support structure from the olive tree. Again, we want to have this garden be attractive, we want it producing lots of good food for the kitchen, and we want it to be as simple to care for as possible. And if you're the hardcore gardener, this stuff is probably not for you because you already got your own methodology. This is for the average Joe, like average Joe in dodgeball. This is average Joe's garden. Is a little bit high. Actually, want to plant our peppers and our tomatoes and our chilies deep, and get that thing down there a little bit deeper. A 
going to grow up real tall, probably get supported by the olive tree branches here. Again, this olive tree is going to either be sold in 12 months or I'm going to start using it for cuttings. I haven't decided which. I'm going to get back in here to my fine potting mix, mostly small vermiculite and peat. It is certified organic. I'm going to dump heaping amounts on these plants. To come in here with a little bit of grow power. Again, a nice 531 humic fertilizer. This is the standard of the industry in California and the Southwest, I'm sure, uh, for landscaping. Just a starter fertilizer to get the plants going. I'm not a person to measure things. I just do, you know, oh, what well, looks good. We'll just go with it. Throw the rest out for my future lawn. And get a little bit of this Peruvian seabird poop. This would probably be way too much. It's going to grab a little of this by hand. I got a nice huge gaping wound on my hand from uh, doing some work. It's a great way to go to the hospital for about three weeks. One of my first large specimen tree projects I did. Uh, was a huge acacia tree. Lord only knows why he wanted a huge acacia tree, but in any event, he planted it or finished the planting himself, fertilized it, and I didn't hear back from him and couldn't even get in touch with them for about three four weeks a month. He wound up with a massive staph infection from his hand as a result of using organic fertilizer. He had a little wound in there, went in, and completely nearly killed him and destroyed his inside of his body barely lived through it. Mainly as an older person, but Staphylococcus, nasty stuff. So I'm, I'm going to be our guinea pig here. Let's see if I drop dead. I know a lot of you would enjoy that, but my wife and my at least one kid won't. So really get back to wearing my gloves. Again, keep this wound covered. Got my aloe vera back there to clean it up. Be very careful fertilizer and open cuts on your hand. Got my bone meal. And a little bit of this in here. Better a little bit of fertilizer each week than too much all at once. And we're going to finish off our little recipe with a heaping handful, of course, gypsum. This application of gypsum pertains to the southwest and the western U.S. I don't believe this is uh, how you guys in the East do your gardening, but I'm not an East Coast gardener. So you have to uh, ad-lib the gypsum with uh, your own needs and requirements. In the West, Southwest, our water is horrible, a lot of salt. And I've got my hose here ready this time. Again, ugly as hell right now, we're not looking for the pretty concept. Looking for long-term function. So we're going to water in our grow power our Peruvian bird poop, our bone meal, and our gypsum. And we're just going to saturate this planter bed. Probably take all of, them, all of the day for these plants to bounce back and be standing upright. Remember the olive tree was bone dry, or not bone dry, but it was quite dry at the bottom. It had a lot of ants. You want to kill those ants by soaking the heck out of this container. And remember, you're starting out with the dry planting mixes. They're not soaking wet or you wouldn't be able to pick up the bag. You can get that hose down deep. Again, container enema. Just want all that water getting in here and flushing out the bottom. Cannot overwater the first few days of this container. I recently told a person who Plant, when we help plant some large avocado trees, you can't overwater the first few days. Okay, you can't overwater as long as the water is draining. If you're watering and the water is still sitting in the, in the drainage tubes or the breathing tubes I send with the trees, okay, then you are overwatering. Overwatering only applies, you can't overwater as long as it's draining free. Once that water is sitting up, on the soil line, we're taking a long time to percolate through, then it's time to ease back. In a nursery setting, 
these containers to be watered probably once a day, at least every other day. So we've got this thing being liquefied. We have our basil, our uh, English thyme, our lemon thyme, our oregano, our lemon thyme, and our English thyme. We got our Anaheim chilies here. And then just rinse it down. So now we've got our light herb and chili container. We have our cucumber and blueberry revival program. And we have our large kitchen herb with rosemary and salvia and some lavender over here with another large mission olive tree. And we're rocking and rolling. You can just keep things sprayed down, keep the dust down. And again, take care of those open wounds. I forgot to put on my gloves. You know, thoroughly blast that out of there. Don't want a staph infection. And that's that one.